Hey guys, Brendan in Productions here, and today I am going to talk about uh, how to create good icons for your applications that you have made. Now, it doesn't matter what type of application you're using. Uh, it could be C++, VB, C Sharp, any language you want. But any desktop application, you need a good icon to present your users with uh, something nice when they look at the desktop. Now, icons can produce, be produced in a number of various ways. They can be just letters, uh, background in letters, you know, um, maybe just a little image. But today I'm going to be going over how to make a, a nice modern looking icon that isn't too bad and really quick to make. So uh, you can make this for your quick little projects for, uh, to present a nice look for your company and or independent software, uh, whatever you want. So I'm going to be using Photoshop in this tutorial, however I'm sure GIMP, uh, Paint.net, and any other free alternative will work for this type of thing. So what you're going to want to do is create a new document, and uh, since it's going to be an icon, it needs to be 32 by 32. And uh, then we're just going to press OK. And uh, the first thing you'll notice is uh, 32 by 32 is actually really small, so we're just going to go ahead and zoom in real fast and uh, make sure we can see all of it. And uh, once we're good with that, first thing we need to do is actually make a transparent background because we don't want a just a white block. So the easiest really way to do this, in my opinion, is to create a new layer and then just delete the background. So once you do that, you'll get these uh, checkerboard marks or checkerboard background, and that just signals that it is transparent. So now that our layer is transparent, we can go ahead and start making the icon. Now, my application, let's just say, colors are black and gray. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is create a new layer, which is going to be the background box. Now what I'm going to do is right click on this rectangle tool here and actually make it rounded rectangle tool. And uh, the default radius of around 10 pixels is good. And then we're just going to line up the uh, corners of our selector with the corner of our document and then uh, make it nice and lined up. And once you've gotten it nice and lined up, you can just uh, unclick, and then you've got a nice rounded rectangular uh, shape there. And now what you're going to want to do is you're going to actually want to create a gradient inside this to create a nice shade. But in order to create a gradient, we actually need to rasterize the layer. Uh, you can do this by right-clicking on the layer and clicking rasterize. And then it just turns it into a regular shape. Now the easiest way to produce a gradient for this type of thing is actually by uh, creating a new layer on top of that and um, having a rounded uh, rounded rectangular tool. Just make another one around halfway down. So, you know, just around there is good. And make sure everything lines up perfectly. And uh, right now it looks like it'll make no difference, but um, it will once we apply the effect. So we're going to go ahead and rasterize this layer as well. And then we're going to click on the layer of the second little uh, box we have here. And then we're going to go to the layer effects. And we're actually going to do a gradient overlay. Now, as you can tell, the default gradient is actually looking pretty good. But what we want to do is actually adjust the colors a little bit until we actually like it. So right now it looks good, but we want it to blend a little better than it does. So we're going to click on the gradient color and actually make the uh, we're actually going to make another little point right here very close to the end so it blends a little better as you can tell here it actually blends into the black now uh, and we're just going to apply that now what it, this default setting is good because it just it creates a nice little image you can play with this however and set uh, the scale uh, if you really want to um, I'm going to leave mine in the hundred and uh, yeah that's all good always double click and go back and edit it. I'm going to also change the opacity to around uh, 65 so it's not as intrusive as it was before. So that's good. And now we're going to create a, another layer where we're actually going to put the image that our icon is going to have. Now this application let's just say is called text edit. So that's two words uh, the first one beginning with a T and the second one beginning with an E. So I'm just going to create a basic uh, text logo here T E. Uh, now, font is very important in a, uh, an icon because you know need it to look nice and not too sloppy. So you can select a good one. This one's good, Mangle. I think 
I'm going to change the color to white. Yeah, mangle is good. Now you can uh, alternate the text if you like. For example, you can apply an arc. But, uh, or, yeah, that's good. A nice little arc there. And we're just going to move it down a little bit so it's not too intrusive on the gradient we've got there. And, uh, yeah, so now we've got a nice uh, logo and uh, or icon for our application. And right now it looks really gross because we're zoomed in all the way. But if we zoom out, uh, we can actually see that it looks very nice. Very nice. And that's about how, how it's going to appear on the desktop. So that's good. And now it comes to saving our logo. Uh, as we... S uh, when you default save and collect, click down here, for your extensions, the .ico extension uh, will not be there. Now this is unfortunate because you need it as a .ico extension in order to save it as your icon for uh, Visual Basic or .NET based applications, I believe. So um, what you can do is you can actually just pull up a quick Google search and uh, just do Photoshop, whatever version, save icon. And then there'll be plugins all over the place. Uh, the one I used is actually from telegraphics.com. And then we just need to choose uh, download the latest version here. And then uh, I speak English, so I click more information. And then I chose Windows 64 bit because that's what I'm running. Photoshop CS4 only. Then I just put it in my plugins folder and we were all good. So we're going to go ahead and save this as an ICO file on our desktop and I'm just going to name it te.ico and then we're going to have a standard ico because I think that's all VB supports but I'm not sure and then as we notice it's on our desktop now and it looks very nice it looks good the gradient uh, provides it with a nice modern 3D ish type of look while the TE is although the art could have been done a little better and maybe the font a little better it still looks good for demonstration purposes so that's how you can create a very nice uh, icon for your applications in Photoshop. Uh, I'm using CS5. Uh, you can use whatever version you want, I guess. But yeah, so that's how you do it. I hope you guys enjoyed this basic Photoshop tutorial. I know it's kind of uh, out there for me, but needs to be done. All right, so I'll see you guys in future tutorials. Remember to rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, see ya.